doing. Uh, what we're looking at here, we're looking at our muscle car makeover, and it's in primer. Now it's been sitting approximately a week, and it's time to go ahead and start block sanding it for paint. Now we're going to take some panels off of this when we paint it. We're going to take the fenders off the hood, and what the fuck is this hell? My fucking trash can. What the fuck? Alright, so, sorry about that, we had, uh, the wind's blowing real hard out today and it blew over a trash can in the other room, but anyway, so, what I was saying is that we are going to paint, um, each of these panels are going to be painted separate, so we're going to take the fenders off, the hood, the two doors, we already got the deck lid off, and I don't like painting cars that way. I really fucking don't because to line all these panels back up is going to be a real fucking bitch. But we're going to get her done because we're going to do it right. And if you want to make your muscle car right or maybe possibly your daily driver or your pickup truck or whatever the fuck you're riding in, maybe your bicycle, you got to do it right. You got to tear it down, you got to break it down, and you got to do it the right way. And that's why I am taking you through all these steps of what the fuck's going on here. So, back to what I was trying to tell you in the fucking beginning, is that I am at the stage now to block sand this down. Now, to get the proper, uh, you might say, finish, the show quality finish, you have to wet sand it. Now, you can dry sand it using 180 grit, which is basically equivalent to the 400, but we're going to go 400 because it gives it that more glass, uh, slick finish. We aren't going to have any uh, deep scratches that might be caused from the uh, dust building up on the sandpaper and this, that, and the other. But now I'm getting ahead of myself because before we even do that, what we got to do is we have got to DA sand that. And the only reason I'm going to DA sand, I'm going to go over it real, real quick with my DA sander using 180. So we got my DA sander right here. We're going to be using 180 sandpaper just like that. And we're going to go over it real quick. And the only thing we're doing this for is to bust off that top coat, that, that, that real hard film that creates itself and I'm sure everybody out there that's ever sanded a car or something that's primer they're going to relate to me and say I know what the fuck you're talking about bitch it sucks you waste half your fucking sandpaper trying to get that fucking top layer off because it's like hard as a rock well this is the fucking cure right here a good DA sander and uh, a nice steady hand and very fast motion like I'm about ready to do right now welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. today he's not mad at me he's out there working on that 1969 that 69 Chevy Chevelle he's actually doing a pretty good job on that Chevelle showing everybody how to, how to repaint the car and make it look pretty at least he's leaving me alone today and I don't have to worry about him getting mad look at me I'm a pretty dog I'm a pretty looking little guy who the hell is he to say, stay in the office by yourself? Because I'm just a puppy dog. I'm supposed to be his best friend. If only he would treat me like that. That's all I'm asking, just a little bit of loving. It's not fair. You know, let me tell you the real situation we got going on here. 
I'm going to tell you the real situation we got going on here. The puppy dog is a whiner. The puppy dog, can, he needs to shut up. He needs to grow up and be a big dog instead of some little sissy ass dog. A little bit of this and that just to, just to make me happy is all I want. That's what the real situation is. I'm just a strawberry, though. I mean, you know, someone's going to eat me, shit me out. I'm going to go down the toilet and be nothing is what I'm going to be in a couple days. But I I, I got to get my angle on that story and, and, and let you know that how I fucking feel. <laughs> do you care about my feelings like you do the dog? Uh. I just want to be left alone and be the puppy dog that I need to be. I, I gotta go. Someone, uh, someone's looking for me. They're, they're, they're getting the sugar out now to sweeten it up. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm only gonna be alive for a couple more days. Down the shitter I go. Feel sorry for me, you cocksucker. Feel sorry for me, you fuck. <sighs> it's not fair. It's just not fair. Uh. <laughs> I said, fuck it all, motherfucker. Let's just get on that motherfucking video and get shit going, man. That's what I'm motherfucking say. Fuck all this motherfucking whining motherfucking bitch. I want to see this motherfucking video, motherfucker. Let's see some motherfucking blocks there. That's what I want to do, motherfucker. Get over that motherfucking video. Get it done. Get it done right. Over DIY out of school. Man. Let's, let's go out there and join him and, and see what's going on today on the 1969 Chevelle. It's not my fault. It's never my fault. <laughs> Okay, so we got a guy here, his name's Marv. He's supposed to be like this ace fucking guy. What's going on, Marv? Hey, how you doing there? Like, they can't see you, bud. You got a okay. hand right here. Hey, hello. Okay, now you're supposed to be helping me like part-time fucking guy getting this ready to paint. What's going on? I need to paint. Okay, but when? I got I've been waiting on you for like a week, two weeks, three I weeks to fucking... So now I'm, I'm taking my time out to get her done when you said you were going to help me do this, Marv. Well, I get that Mercedes, I might help you. See you later. Take it easy, okay. bud. Uh, All right. We'll do that skull head later. All right. All right. That's Marv, Starvin' Marvin, uh, airbrusher guy right here in Dallas, Texas. Hell of a fucking dude. And uh, be watching for those videos of Marv, the starving guy, or if I already have him on DIY out of school, check it out. It's called Freehand Airbrushing for you to fucking learn. Let's get back to work over here. Uh, we ain't even started. We're still fucking off here. Uh, we got five minutes into the fucking camera. Be bullshitting. It's time to start DA, and now, before I start DA saying, I want to let everybody know that you got to move very fast with this. Um, you got to use both hands, all right? Now, I got a DA sander that has this T-handle on it. Um, there's times that I will be using it one-handed, but I've been doing this a long fucking time. And you got to keep your DA sander moving all the time. Do not stop in one place. All we're doing is busting the top layer off, and then we're going to keep going with it. Uh, change your sandpaper out vigorously. You don't want the sandpaper uh, to build up with uh, 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 dry fucking dust that will cause scratches and swirl marks. Um, this is very inexpensive. This is like, uh, yeah, you get the idea. Let's get her done and let's get her done.
isn't a clown act video, bud. It's DIY Auto School in session, okay? Follow my lead. Let's see if you learned anything from what I showed you. All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over DIY Auto School. Now we're working on our muscle car makeover. And where we left off, we had to uh, prime the car. We block sanded the whole car out. I went over it with the DA sander. I got all the deep scratches out. I reprimed the whole car. And now what we're doing, we're actually blocking the car. Now there's two ways that you can block the car. You can wet sand the car, which is usually what I do, but this is winter time. And I don't want to have to go through the hassle of washing the car up due to the fact that the, all the rubber's gone, this, that, and the other, and the guy's not going to replace his interior. So we're dry sanding it. And what we're doing, we're starting out with 220, and then we're going to work our way into 320. Is that what you're using there? What is that? 220. That's 220? Yep. Now, if you don't have any 220, you can also use 180 grit. And then after you block it with 180, then you can go to 320. Now the advantage of wet sanding your car is that if you use 400, you don't have to double sand it. You just sand it one time, you're done, you're ready to go. But this here is a minute, meticulous car. I want to make sure that the owner is very happy with it. It's a, it's a collector item. It's a, a matching car, number fucking car situation. So we're going to give it the double whammy, two job fucking sand job and uh, get it ready for paint. Let's look the car over. Let's see what 972's learned since he's been here. And uh, hopefully, he's going to have something to tell us on the situation. So, what we're looking at here, we're looking at 972 down on his knees, sanding. Now, what he's doing is he's taking uh, a dust broom. Did you see the dust broom that he had in his hand? What he is doing is he's cleaning his paper off with the dust broom as he's block sanding. What that's helping him do is make sure that the sanding block is not going to gum up on him and cause a creation of deep scratches, which if you don't clean your sandpaper off and keep your sandpaper clean all the time, that's what's going to happen. All right, how's it going? It's going great. Right, you want to give us any tech tips or anything? Uh, can you show us what you've been learning and what you've been doing? Uh, okay. How are them rings doing, bud? You don't have fucking rings, do you? No. Okay. All right, come over here on the hood. Kind of walk us through the procedure of how to block sand a hood out like this, or the car like we're doing. What is the first step of actually sanding something down and getting it prepped up for that nice hot rod, meticulous paint job you that we're going sure after? For Hello? You make I was sure. talking. Oh, Don't over talk, sorry. okay, bud? Sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Anyways, you gotta make sure you know you're using the right. Uh, you need to slow down because this is a DIY do it yourself. We're trying to teach people. Slow it down and let's start from the beginning. Ready? 179, you're on, bud. Gotta make sure they use the right, you know, grip. It's two two twenty. You go over the Okay, so over. can so you're using a DA paper there. Yeah, it's DA paper. Now could people get two twenty in a regular stock uh, file paper? Could they do that? I don't think so. Yes, they can. They can. Okay, so you got to roll a 220 out, and you're you're sanding it with the 220 right now. Yep. Now, what are you using to sand that with? What is that? It's a block. What kind of block? Uh, that yep. looks like some kind of double-sided yeah, block. Yeah, it's a double-sided. This is the smooth part. When you're sanding it, always put it face down like this. The, the, okay, the smooth? The smooth part. The okay, part. when you say smooth, you're talking soft. Yeah, soft. Can I see the block there? It's 972. Take your paper off, please. Okay, I need to get a new one anyways. There you go. All right, what 972 is talking about is this block is a double whammy block. Now, one side is hard, the other side is soft. And since this has got a lot of contours and curves in it, what we're going to do to make sure that we don't burn through, you can see where we're already burning through here and up, possibly up here and other places, is that we're going to use the soft side. Uh, we also have a guide coat. I went ahead and put a light guide coat on it to make sure that the whole, everything is sanded properly. If without the guide coat, I don't think 972 could have done it. Probably not. Is the guide coat helping you out? It's helping me a lot. I got the whole hood done and almost okay. the fender. We got the hood completely done. We're going to check that again. I'll be the fucking judge if it's done. Yeah. Okay? But the most important thing is what? What did you learn the other day about sanding? Remember? There's a certain way you sand? No. We'll no. get to that in a minute. Okay. Don't ever fucking sand without a block. No. Because what happens? It messes up. You burn But through. what happens? You burn through the No. Ground. Do you see how you're rubbing that with your hand? Yeah. Can you put your hand like that, please? What we got here, we got grooves in between our fingers. When you're using your hand like this, you are actually putting grooves in the paint. Right. So when you go to look at that, when you got the clear coat on it and all the other paint on it, what's happening is you're going to see all these ripples and waves throughout the paint job, and that's because why? 
You're not using a block. You're not using the special handy dandy block that my friend Pete just showed you yeah. that costs like $3 for a two pack. Okay, can you give us a little example how to sand? Just show us right in here. What's what's you know? Put some sandpaper on it. Get some 320, so we don't have to use our 220 again. Okay, now what we're using uh, for sandpaper, we're using a stick-on style sandpaper that comes in a roll of 100 feet that you can purchase. It's a 320 dry sandpaper, and we are using that on the block to sand with. So, what's the first thing you want to do? Make sure it's on the soft side. Okay. Of course, hard right. side right Got here. It. Make sure you use your thumb as a guide. Okay, you're using your thumb and your fingers as a guide. Now, why would yeah. you use that for a guide? So, well, so around the edges, you don't burn through the primer. Okay, so your fingers are being used as a guide yeah. to feel and touch. Yeah, if you go like this, you're going to burn through and you're right. going to see metal. Okay. You don't okay. want to do that. As you can see, I've already done that because I didn't Right, but when finger. you're doing the primer, it's pretty irrelevant that you're going to burn through some well, spots. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I'll burn through right there. That's the, uh, the color underneath the primer, uh -huh. that okay. blue. Right. So. so what we're doing, using your hand as a guide, you're eliminating a lot of problems and actually seeing what's going on. And more pressure too. Okay, more pressure. Go. What's next? Um, Isn't there a, a certain way that you need to sand or what? What's yeah, up? Yeah, you don't sand up and down. You don't sand up and down. You don't do what? Short strokes, remember? Yeah, you do long strokes and hard strokes. You go like this. And you want to use a cross-cut style sanding like this, procedure. Like right here. Okay, and why is that? Well, because the lines, you know, you want everything to be straight. You don't want something to be like this. Right, we don't want to go like in circles. That. We're not waxing it. We're not buffing it. We want to it. go straight so it has that even lines. Now, there's another little thing that we need to cover, and that's called sections, remember? Yeah. You want to do what? You want to make sure, like, you don't go to place to place and then, you know, sand one place and then go to next. You make you a box and then just sand in that box and then get that done. Then go to the next section, then the next, then the next, and it'll get done quicker. And that, exactly. Okay. You're learning, bud. Keep yeah. the good fucking work up and you might stick around. Yeah. Okay. Let's get the sand in. Let's get her done. I'll explain the rest. Okay. All right, so as you can see, Dylan's learning how to do it properly. If he can do it, I definitely square you up that you can do this. Uh, he's working on the fender down here, and I see that he's, he's actually getting pretty good at it. When he first started, to do that one fender would have took him three days. He's got it down to what? How long have you been working on this? Like 10 minutes. About 20 minutes on that fender? Yeah, nine okay, but the real thing is, is you really got to get down on the subject and make sure that you're going to sand it properly. And sanding it properly means not no short strokes, nice long even strokes, and when you're using your imaginary boxes, make sure that you overlap as you're sanding. So we basically just started on this. Today is actually the day before Thanksgiving. I will be down here tomorrow sanding this car because we want to start dismantling this thing and start painting it. I'm actually getting excited to start painting it, and what we'll do is when we get this thing blocked out, and, and, and re actually ready for paint. We're going to go ahead and remove the doors, the fenders, the hood, and then of course we'll remove this piece right here and paint all those separate. The first thing that we're going to paint, we're going to go ahead and paint the body shell itself. That way, when we do paint the doors and the hoods, the fenders, and this piece here, we'll be able to take those color sand and buff them and directly bolt them straight onto the car so they ain't sitting around collecting dust and waiting to be installed on a car like these pieces are. So we'll go ahead and let 972 keep blocking that out. He's doing a pretty good job. Now, can you go ahead and tell everybody um, how you clean your paper and why it's important to keep your paper clean? It clogs it up. I mean, if... So when you're dry sanding, your paper does clog? Well, yeah. I mean, if you got all this dust right here, you're not getting anything else sand yeah. besides sand. Right. So what's the best way to clean the paper off? Well, take this brush. It's a regular dust brush. You can buy it anywhere. And just... There you go. That's and that good. makes your sandpaper even last longer, am I right? Yeah, it lasts like a lot longer if you do that than clogging it up. Now another thing when you're dry sanding uh, is that you use your, there you go, you, you got, use the brush yeah. to take the dust off to keep it clean instead of using your blower and getting the dust all over in the air. Well right? yeah, and so you know where you sand it. I mean if you got dust all the way around the fender, you don't know where you start sanding and then That's you right. go over it again. Because you can't see the guide coat or yeah. feel anything because there's so much dust build up that it feels smooth and it's really not. Yeah, and then you go it over and it wastes more time. Okay, keep going, 972. You're doing a good job. So we'll be back on our project. This is our uh, 1969 Chevelle 396 SS model uh, hot rod. And uh, we're on the downhill slide. We're on the downhill side. 
and uh, hopefully we'll be painting this very very shortly we'll be back because he was working late last night and today is actually Thanksgiving so I'm here by myself because that's the situation you have when you're the small business owner that has to make a fucking living and pay all the bills which that's fine uh, everybody deserves to be with their family and friends and enjoy the holidays so uh, what we're doing is we're still block sanding the car now I'm still using my uh, my, uh, my soft block which is a flex block and I went ahead and transferred over to 180 because now I'm sanding the roof now uh, if you remember correctly we block sanded this car down when it first got here uh, we had 940 Mr. Clown Hat Fuck Off Guy uh, block the car out with 80 grit now I want to go ahead and explain that to you the paint job that was on this car uh, was very very old but it was in real good condition now, we could have got away probably with sanding it with 180 and then priming it, but the situation is, is we want to make sure that this is a nice top quality job. We want to make sure that the primer and all of the primer coats stick to the vehicle and last a long time because this is your paint job. What you're seeing me do right here, this is the paint job. If this is not done properly, then your car is going to look like shit. The prep job is the paint job. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. If the prep job's fucked up, your paint job's fucked up. Now, we've already primed this bitch two times. We're probably going to have to go back and spot prime it one more time. But as we can see, I'm still sanding the second coat. Now, the first time that we sanded it was with the DA sander. We cleaned it all up using our DA sander with 180 grit. You saw that. Now we're hand blocking it, dry sanding it, not wet sanding it. I was explaining to you about dry sand versus wet sand, and I have made the conclusion up that once I dry sand it with the 180 grit, I'm going to go back over the car with 400. The 400 is a lot better sand job than if you dry sand with 320. You're going to get a slicker uh, prime job, prep job, whatever you want to call it, and it's going to give you that higher quality fucking show car finish that you're looking for. Now, when you're block sanding your car, there's a lot of places that uh, the individual doing the work isn't paying attention to. Of course, right here is very easy to get to because you're, you know, sanding like this. But when you're stretching your arms way out over here like this, you're not really paying attention and you're thinking that you're sanding it down really good and you're not. So this is where you really need to pay attention on the roof panel itself is up in the center of it because as you start going out and stretching your arm, you're not getting the pressure or the sandability that you are getting like right in here. You see what I'm saying? You're using more force right here but then out here, it's less force, so you're getting less sand job going. So always remember that the uh, panel that you're sanding has to be sanded at an even level surface. Not good here, medium here, and bad here. Because once again, the prep job is your paint job. Always remember when you're dry sanding like this, you want to overlap your sand pattern. Remember the box I was telling you about? Remember that? All right, so you're going to do a section here, a section here, then once you do all those sections, then you're going to come back over and mix it all together. So make sure that everything is overlapped and you're sanding at a nice even force all the way through the whole procedure. And I just want to let everybody out there know that 
Normally, I would be wearing a respirator style dust mask, not to breathe this dust, but for instructional purposes only, uh, I'm not wearing it right now. So always remember safety equipment is number one and don't forget your safety equipment. Now there's one section of the roof that I want to concentrate on that's very important. Um, if this was my car and I own this car, uh, I, would, I would take the windshield out. I would go ahead and remove the windshield to paint this car because this is probably the last paint job that the owner will ever do on this car. And to do the high quality paint job that we're going to try to get here, it would really be necessary to do it properly is to pull the windshield out. And the reason why, let me go ahead and get this off of here and I'll show you, is because you want to get that paint up inside here. That's why we took the chrome off, because you want that paint to get underneath and inside. So if this was my car, I would have went ahead, took the glass out and removed all the little clips, all right? Because this is another situation. These little clips that you're looking at right here, you don't want to get paint on those. If those things build up with paint and primer, you're screwed. The clips are useless. They're not going to work and, and they're just useless. So what I've been doing, every time that I take the car off and, and put the primer on it or what have you, I will go ahead and individually take these clips off as well. Because I do not want anything wrong with this. When we put it back together, I don't want the chrome to pop off because the clips are full of paint and primer. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, what the situation is about inside here, we're not going to remove the glass. So what we got to do is we got to meticulously get in here and sand this edge. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people, uh, it just passes by them. They don't give a fuck because they think that the chrome is going to cover that. The chrome goes right up to this edge. That's where the chrome goes. If you don't have a good fucking situation going on right in this fucking area here, guess what's going to happen? Your paint's going to start peeling off, and then once you pop the chrome on there and the chrome hits that paint right there where you didn't fucking sand, it's going to cause an effect where the paint will crack and end up peeling off. And I seriously doubt that Mr. 940 clown hat fucking guy got up in here and sanded that with 80 grit. I don't know if he did or not. But I'm going to think that he didn't because that's something that everybody overlooks and they think, well, that's covered with the chrome. I don't need to sand it. Uh, another thing you want to be careful of is your glass, all right? When you're sanding around this glass area right here, uh, especially when you're going to use 80 grit, that's right, I'm going to use 80 grit to scuff that down with it. I'm going to go back over it with 180 and then finally go over it with uh, 400. But you want to go ahead and tape that off with 2-inch tape. So you go ahead and take your 2-inch tape just like this. And then you would cover the glass, all right, not getting up into where you're going to sand, but you would cover the glass. And any chrome that might be in the way that you're not going to remove, you want to go ahead and cover that just like you see me doing right here. And what that will do, that will protect the edge of that glass so you don't scratch it with your sandpaper. So what I usually do on these openings right here uh, to prep them for paint, is because it's real important that the paint sticks here. Remember I told you that. As I start out with a little piece of 80 grit, this is what you call a hand job. You got to sand this by hand. And I just take it right here with my fingers and I'm just lightly scuffing that. All right, and I'm getting behind the clips right here. See what I'm talking about? Here's our clip right here. Here's my sandpaper. You can see just by looking at the sandpaper that that wasn't primed properly and it wasn't sanded properly. So it's important to take your sandpaper and just scuff it down, get behind that clip as good as you can, and make sure that you get a nice rough edge there where the paint's going to stick. Once that's done, then you'll go ahead and take a piece of uh, 180, you see what I'm saying? You're going to fold that into a little piece, and you can go ahead and use your used sandpaper for this, it doesn't have to be. Uh, new sandpaper and then you'll go ahead and repeat your process just like this. You're going to go right over that clip. Did you see how I did that? We're going over that clip because that has got to be sanded. And then once we get ready to start 400 in it, we'll go ahead and 400 sand that with wet and it'll be prepped for paint. So you can basically see that this is not your average Joe Mako paint job. This is not your Earl Shibes paint job. 
This is not your little local hole in the wall fucking garage. Let me give you a thousand dollars, scuff and paint my fucking car situation here. This is a situation that says, you know what? You better wake your fucking ass up. You better get off your fucking ass and start fucking doing it right. If you don't fucking do it right, you're the one that's going to fuck up, waste all your fucking money, and all the hard work that you put into your car is going to go down the fucking drain. You're not going to be happy with it. You'll probably end up selling the piece of shit, and you'll just be depressed over it. So follow my lead here. Watch, listen, and learn, and you will be smarter than me because you're learning from my fucking mistakes. All right? What's going over here? Going great. Get this taking your time. You're doing it right. Yep. No well, we went ahead and. Uh, no rush. Yeah. Uh, what we've done is we went ahead and changed our plan of execution here, bud. What? Well, we're gonna go ahead and dry sand the whole car. Okay. We're gonna start out with uh, 220 and work our way down to 320. But uh, since I was here on Thanksgiving Day, block sanding this car out while you were eating your turkey uh, dinner, turkey dinner and, uh, enjoying your family atmosphere, my friend Pete decided to go ahead and uh, what are you using on that block now? 180. Okay, we're going to block sand the whole car 180 and then we're going to come back with wet 400 because we really want this to be a nice clean job. All right. And wet sanding is really the way to go when it comes to uh, show car quality. Uh, you can achieve this with 320. But since the weather has turned on us for the better, that means that it's warmer out. We're going to go with uh, wet sanding. Now, when you're in the dead cold of winter and it's freezing ass cold, dry sanding would be the way to go because the wet sanding is what? It's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold and you might as well be up in yeah. the Antarctic swimming around in the snow yeah. uh, when wet sanding. So now that the weather has turned on us for the better and it's warmer out, we're going to go ahead and block sand it once with 180. And then we'll finish it out with uh, what? 420? No. What? I didn't say that. What? I said 400 wet. 400 wet. All right, okay. pay attention. Okay. 972. Got it. All right? All right. You're doing a good job. Keep going. Nice long stroke. Sections. Sections. Keep your paper clean. I got it. Get some pressure on that. Push. I'm pushing. All right. So, like I said, I was here on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, this is actually Saturday, two days after Thanksgiving. We're still block sanding our car out, dry sanding it. But I wanted to show you a spot that most people uh, don't really pay attention to. But it's one of the most important parts of the car to sand to make sure that you get that high quality job. <laughs> and what we're talking about, we're talking right here in this area. This is our rocker panel area. This is the right hand side of the car. 972 clown fuck off guys over there doing that side, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Uh, this is a, a situation that says you got to get on the ground to do it properly. Now when we paint the car, of course, we're going to put this on jack stands and take the tires off, but the deal is, is this area right here has got to be sanded 100% thoroughly because if you don't do this right, two things are going to happen. You're going to get dry paint down here for one, it's not going to be a high gloss shine, and another thing is it's going to start peeling and flaking off down inside this area right here underneath the rocker panel where uh, the body lip is where it's all spot welded together and then what that will create is all this other paint to start peeling as it reaches up and then it's just going to really be a shitty job now a lot of people that are you know nitpickers and whiners and and people that find problems on cars this is one of the areas they start looking at. They start looking down here, they start feeling this area to see how smooth it is, and, and they want to see if it's done properly. So this is a section right here that says, i got to pay attention to my rocker panels. So what we're doing, we're taking our block, and we're repeating our process and sanding it just like we did the top of the car. Uh, this is, once again, this is 180 grit, and we're going to go ahead and we're leveling that primer out we're, we're getting that filler primer to work into our, uh, what you might call to our advantage, all right, as far as filling in scratches and leveling it all out. But then once I hit it with my block, what I'm doing is I'm taking some 180, this is where your hand comes in, this is where 
we want to use our hand as a block sander because this is not flat under here. This is this is like a concave area. So I'm going to show you what the paper is going to look like, and this is going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. As I'm sanding this down, you can see the paper. All right, you can see the paper has blue paint and brown on it. That means that uh, this was not sanded properly when we primed it. And what we're doing, we're going down to the primer. So that's telling me if I'm hitting brown, uh, a brown color on my paper, that's telling me even the person that painted this car before didn't prep the bottom of this rocker up properly and the paint didn't really get up under there like it should have been. So this is a real important area to concentrate on as you are restoring your car or giving it that muscle car makeover that we're trying to accomplish right here. And even down here where the fender is, the lower part of the fender, even though we're going to take these fenders off since I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, really good. I want to make sure that that is sanded thoroughly. It's important that you sand everything possible with every stage of sanding. That way, if you miss a little bit of sanding with your wet sanding, you know you got it with your 180. Once again, I want to mention to you that this is your paint job. What I'm doing right here, uh, what we are doing, 972 Clown Funk Guy and my friend Pete, we are, we are actually molding and making our paint job the professionality that we want. Without a good prep job, you are not going to have a good paint job. This is it right here. This is what makes your paint job doing what I'm doing, taking three days to sand a car to get it to the qualifications and magnitude of what I want. While I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and concentrate on the bottom of my door as well. And when I say concentrate on these Chevelles, it has this body line right here. And if you notice in this area here, you can see where the primer didn't really hit right. So what we're doing is we are making sure that we block all this out and we're getting everything uh, right so when I come back to spot prime this we won't have a problem and we'll know that the primer is going to cover good. Okay, now that we're done sanding that, we're going to go ahead and move up to the car and repeat our process throughout the car. I just wanted to show you that this is a very, very uh, a crucial situation of doing these rocker panels right to make the car the, the quality that we're trying to do here. Uh, always pay attention to the lower part of your car where you wouldn't even think about it, and that includes our fender wells as well. Uh, it's just a real important uh, aspect, and it's very simple and very quick and easy to uh, come down here and do it the right way. So that little venture right there, that took approximately five minutes, ten minutes to get her done, and uh, well worth the time. Always remember that you have to do it properly to get the job that you want. Your prep job is your paint job, your sand job, your final sand job. If you notice, I have not used any air tools on this at all. I'm doing everything by hand. That's what it takes to get her done and do it right. We'll be back when we get ready to start wet sanding it. Uh, we got one side of the car completely done. Uh, 972 fucking guy over there is uh, working on the other side. And uh, hopefully today we'll be done dry sanding this, clean it up, and start wet sanding. All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete. Now, we got our muscle car makeover, our Chevelle. It's all block sanded down. It's been dry sanded with uh, 220 and 180. Now what we're going to do, we're going to start wet sanding it. This will be our final sand job. This is where we start in with our wet 400. Now if you remember correctly, I told you that the weather changed on us to the better. That means that it got warmer out. It's about 78 degrees today and uh, I believe that the weather's going to stay that way for a while. But the situation is that when the weather's good like this, it's better to wet sand it. If it was freezing ass cold, we'd go ahead and dry sand it with 320. 
But before we do any type of sanding at all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my guide coat spray paint. Now this is just cheap, inexpensive, 98 cent flat black spray paint from your local fucking uh, corporation hardware store. Are you listening to me or are you smoking a fucking cigarette? What's going on here, 972 fucking guy? I'm the door's not locked. It's not locked? Lock the door, smoke your fucking cigarette, get your shit together. Okay? What the fuck's going on? How's our water looking? Are they full? Yes. If they're not, fill them up. We're working on the weekend, bro. We're trying to get shit done. Yep. Get your cigarette lit and smoked and let's get down the fucking road. Yep. So, what we're doing is we are wet sanding the car now. Uh, let's get our guide coat. Once again, I'm going to put a very, very light coat. And the only reason I'm doing this, I was really interrupted here, is that I am making sure that we cover every section of it. Now, if we sand it like that, uh, what's going to happen is we won't know where we stopped sanding or where we did sand. So, using the guide coke technique is going to help us keep our situation in perspective of saying, I sanded the whole fucking car. you call a nice good guide coat to get us going so we can wet sand this thing down now I want to remind everybody out there on this particular paint job we are going to epoxy prime the whole car we're not going to spot prime we're going to epoxy prime the whole car and uh, which is going to give us our final primer job but it's also going to seal it at the same time are you still smoking 972 yes. hurry the fuck up with that bitch yes, sir. What the fuck man Okay, to wet sand our car, we're going to need a few tools, and the tools of choice are going to be a flex block such as this. Uh, this has a soft side and a hard side, and then, of course, it flexes. This is the side of the block that you want to um, concentrate on is the softer side of your block. And then, of course, we got a squeegee to squeegee the water off as we're sanding. And then, right here, we got our 400. This is 400 wet. And then, of course, a sponge. Now, a lot of people use a hose and a spray ball and all this other hokey pokey shit. I don't do that. I use a fucking sponge and, and my block, and then we go from there. That's a very quick, easy access, simple situation, and it gets done very accurately and quick, and then we wash the car off and we're done. Now, what you want to do is you want to take your sandpaper, and you want to start your fold on the side that you're going to use the most, which will be the blue on this one. And then what that's going to do, that's going to give us uh, two blue sides of paper and one side of the hard. Uh, we'll go ahead and use that hard side just to break it down. And then once we do that, then we flip it over and we concentrate on the, uh, uh, the blue side of the block, which is our softer side, and uh, get her done. Yep. What? Huh? Are you done? Yeah, Smoking? Yeah. Then get your block, follow my lead, let's go, bro. You're on one side, I'm on the other side. We're going to get her done and get her done right. Amen. You know, I'm teaching the guy how to do something, and hopefully he's learning. All right, hopefully. All right, so here's our tools of choice right here one more time. We got a block with our sandpaper, we got a water squeegee, and we got a uh, sponge. So what we'll do is... I got my bucket of water right here, all right? You can see that down here. I hope you can. Can you see that? Can we see our bucket? No, you can't see it. Okay, uh, we're going to have to have 972 be the fucking camera guy at this point, and hopefully he's not going to fuck up. What? Is that funny? No. Well, why were you laughing? No. Huh? Huh? You quit laughing when I shined the camera on you. And? Camera guy. Okay, let me see a camera. 
Don't hit the record, bud. Are you there? Okay, uh -huh. look at my hand. Okay, don't do this, dude. Okay. Nice flowing motion. There you go. All right, here's our bucket of water, nice clean water. We're not using any of this fancy shit, you know. We're not using soap in the water and all this other, you know, uh, fairy tale stuff. We're just using nice clean fucking water. Does that make sense, 972 guy? Yeah. We got our sponge here. What we want to do, we want to get our block and our sponge, and we're going to get both those wet at the same time. Want to make sure that your sponge is nice and full of water. There we go. And then, basically, we are going to go ahead and start wet sanding this. And we're going to do the same thing that we did as we were dry sanding it. Uh, we're going to do what? 972. We're going to sand it. Not sand it, but, you know, sand it. No, we're going to visualize sections. Yeah, squares. We're going to visualize some squares and we're going to sand it. All right, Same so uh, we got the guide code here. So all we're going to do, this is basically it right here, see? Yeah, same thing we did before. Same thing we did before. Just and what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the what? The black. Which is called? Uh, the, uh, hang on, the tracing coat. Tracing coat. No, guide, my friend, guide. Okay, guide. Okay, it's called a guide coat. Okay. Now that I did that, I'm flipping my block over, and now we can go ahead and block that out to the nice finish that we need to do what? To paint the car. Yeah. We're going to take our squeegee, and as you can see, as I squeegee it out, you can see that that is a nice mirror finish fucking sand job that I'm coming up with. And it didn't take me long to do that. Why? Because you're doing it right. No, because we already went over it with 180, and it's sanding it with the 400 should go very, very quick. Yeah, now, we got a situation, 972. What's the situation? This block that I'm using is kind of a stiff block. All right. Okay, look where we're sanding right here. Edge. All right, using this block for that is not going to do the job that we really need. So what we need to do is get our flex blocks. Right. Where are those at? Were those in your bucket of water? I asked you to fill the buckets up and you didn't put no fucking water in this one. I'll fill it up. You didn't fucking fill it up. I'll fill it up. So this is where our very, very flex block comes in. This is just an inexpensive, cheap flex block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'll put it on there. And then I'll be able to get all these edges and nice contour uh, sanding as we proceed, you might say, uh, to sand our car. Right. You don't want to sand the whole car with this block. Do you know why? because it's got a lot of flat surfaces. This is, this is a semi-square car. So you want to use this block and this block in conjunction, see? All right, so when you're working on this type of an area, you're gonna to switch to this block and see how that's doing that? Yeah. Are you focusing in where I'm standing here? Yeah. You see, this fits in here really good. It does a really, really nice job of getting in to the tight corners. And I see you didn't sand these edges right here, yeah. 972. We need to do that before we paint it. See how I'm doing that? I'm always using a block for everything. I'm not using my hand. I got different blocks for different angles and different stuff. All right. Did I remind you what this is called? I'm up here. I'm up here now. See, see my face is over here. What we're doing here, this is called the prep job. This is the final prep job. What did I tell you about that? Spot. Spot? Uh, spot. Spot sand? No. no. Your paint job is nothing without your prep job. Right. If you do not do the prep job properly, you're going to have a shitty paint job. Right. Pay attention, 97 fucking 2 guy. Right. So I will repeat my process, sanding the car down. Do you see this lip right here? That's where this block, if I use this block, look what happens. It's not good doing it. Okay, there's air right here. Much All right. Only use that one for flat surfaces. That one for yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm getting around all of my curves. See here, and I'm sanding all of the curved areas. Like let's say this fender, for instance. All right. Once that's done, then I'll come back and do all of my what? Flat. flat. 
Yeah. Yeah. Get your shit together, 972. All right. Okay. I'm trying to teach you how to be a technical assistant. And the main purpose that we're trying to do here, the main goal is to get rid of all the black paint. Um, this second sand job does not have to be uh, very, very precise. All we're doing is making sure to get it where it's paint ready. So you just saw me sand that. Now watch this. Look how nice that looks. Follow my hand here, 972. Look how nice that looks. But we got a problem right here. Look at that right there. That could be two things. That could be an imperfection and it can also be bare metal. But as I'm feeling it with my finger, it feels like an imperfection. So since that's a flat surface, we're going to go ahead and swap over to our big block. Because really the only curved surface is right here. See what I mean? And then we'll go ahead and sand that imperfection out. Because if we don't get that out now, what's going to happen? When we go to wet sand it, I'm up here. When we go to wet sand it and color sand and buff it, it's going to go through the paint and through our sealer and straight down to whatever piece of trash that is and it'll be an imperfection in the paint job. You need to get that out now while you're working on the car now, see? See, it's gone. There's no more there. Done. Done fucking deal. So I suggest 972 to get your shit together and do exactly what I've been doing and pay close attention and get that fucking eagle eye out of your back pocket and into your eye socket and start getting shit done. Okay, bud. There you go. So now we'll take approximately a day and a half to two days to wet sand this. Now that's uh, off and on. It's going to take us a couple days. Once that's done, then we will go ahead and remove the body parts that need be removed, get all the jams painted, the inside of the fenders, this, that, and the other, and then possibly bolt it all back together and then paint the whole outside of the car at one time or paint the body itself, then paint all the little stuff and bolt it back together. When we get to that stage, we'll be back. Take it easy. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, and that guy trying to get her done and do it right. We'll see you later. Uh, that's not a long stroke, 972. Nice big long strokes. Where's your flex block? Okay, flex block on the curves, remember? All right, don't burn, don't put any edges and shit in it. <sighs> okay.